So I'm really excited about this video. I call these um, wave boards. And this is something that's out there. I just found a couple ways to create them. I have uh, included a version of this in my Fusion course, which is currently free right now. But I also have the tutorial to go over how to actually cut a file out like this on your CNC using adaptive um, profiling and creating 3D shapes on your CNC machine. Of course, this can be an SDL and you can print it in plastic. So let's get started. I'm in render mode in Fusion 360 right now. <clears throat> I'm going to turn off this shape that's currently here and I'm going to create a, a couple different splines and curves and we're going to loft those and I'm going to, we're going to go back and forth between solid and surface and we're going to create this shape ourselves. So the first thing that we're going to want to do, again, this is one method. There is another method that I have linked below. So we want to create a sketch. And in the sketch, I want to create it off the, the XY plane. I just selected the plane. And under create, I want to go to rectangle and I want to go to center rectangle. And I want to create a, for this demonstration, I'm going to create a 250 millimeter by no, yeah, we can always scale it up if we wanted by 250 millimeter, just like vector work. This is um, completely scalable. So now that I have my basic square, I want to go ahead and draw my first set of splines. I'm going to have two layers of splines. I'm going to have my top layer and then I'm going to have a lower layer and I'm going to loft in between it, creating the waves. So under my uh, fit spline tool, I'm going to create a series of different lines, which are going to be the top of my, my waves. And I'm just going to click and then move it. I'm not clicking and dragging like I do in Illustrator. I'm just clicking and moving those points. When I get down to the bottom one, I'm hitting enter, but I'm not finishing my sketch yet. And now I'm going to do another fit line and I can do as many as I want. You can be really creative. You can, you could think about, creating a level of interest that you, only you could create. And I'm just gonna draw nicely, have fun drawing this. Now, I could draw this in Illustrator, but I've decided to keep this going inside of Fusion just to keep it a Fusion tutorial. But also, I really like the fit spline tool inside of um, Fusion. I, as I do in Illustrator, but I'm starting to really, really be fond, becoming fond, if that's correct English, of the um, fit spline tool versus the Bezier tool, the, the pen tool inside of Illustrator. Now, I didn't like that one, so I'm just gonna hit undo and I'm gonna follow the curves a little bit, trying to look for organic uh, feel to this. And then the final one, I'm going to just still stay in my, um, I don't like that, I'm gonna still stay in my lines here, and then I'm gonna and I'm gonna come down. Yeah. So now I have my first set of top of my waves, and I feel really good about that. So I'm gonna hit finish sketch. So now it's gonna reorientate it. And now what I want to do is I I have um, a series of this is my sketch right here. I demoed this, I went ahead and did this before. So that's why I have these sketches here. But all I have is I have this sketch that I just drew. Now that I'm going to create another one, but on this time, I'm gonna create one on a different plane. So when I go to create sketch, I'm gonna get this little, the three planes that are default. I want to go to construct and I want to offset plane. I'm going to choose the XY plane and I'm going to bring that down, um, let's say negative 15 millimeters. And what's really cool is I can um, drag that. So I turned off my construction, so there it is. So my construction was off, so that's why it went away. And now I'm going to, with that selected, I'm going to turn off this sketch and I'm going to create another sketch down on this layer. So I'm going to create a sketch on my new offside, the, the, the offside, um, the offset plane. I'm going to create a new sketch on my offset plane. I'm going to go to create rectangle, center rectangle, the same 250 by 
250 by 250 rectangle. And now I'm going to do another set of curves which coincide, those splines will coincide with the other ones. So I'm going to turn that back on, but I have this sketch active. So now um, I'm going to um, deselect it and I'm going to choose my fit spline tool and I'm going to draw inside of where these would, where the other splines would go. So I'm going to go right inside of here. Now this is going to be the bottom part of my spline. Okay, this is going to be the bottom part of my wave. So that's the first one. <clears throat> so now I'm going to choose a fit spline again, and I'm going to go inside of this spline here. If you don't like your snapping, you can change your snapping. And I'm going to do a curve here, 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 and then come back. Hit return, but I still am not finished concluding this sketch yet. And now I'm going to draw one here, here. Just kind of a fun thing to do. And I'm gonna, I'm always snapping to that, the outside border edge. It's really important that you snap to the outside border edge. Uh, I'm finding that I can loft between different um, points, at Bezier points, spline points. So it really doesn't matter that each one of the points is has different amount of anchors. And then the final one, I'm going to do it right here. There we go. That's it. Now I have my two. I'm going to finish the sketch. Now I'm going to go into my 3D view and you can see here that I have one set of curves up here at the top and I have one set of curves here at the bottom. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to loft and then stitch and then subtract that surface by trimming it from a block and we're going to be jamming. We have our two sets of splines, uh, our spline patterns here. We can go back and edit these and it'll completely change the sculpture. In the other video, I'm going to show you how to create these in an entirely different way, a procedure way, which you're really going to like. So I'm going to hit escape. There are two different loft tools. There's one under the solid menu um, here, and then there's one under the surface menu here. I want to create a surface, not a solid. So I'm going to choose a surface loft, and then I'm going to click my profiles here and once I have my profile clicked I'm gonna hit um, this is the profile menu if you want to just see that I'm using all the defaults and I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna bring back my sketch my two sketches here and then I, I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna repeat that loft procedure and then now I'm gonna choose three new splines and that will give me three um, a new lofted surface and then hit OK I'm just going to right click, repeat loft, and going to choose my surfaces again and hit enter. Repeat loft, choose my three profile, enter, repeat loft. Enter, which is sets OK. Right click, repeat loft. And then hit OK. All right. I want to select all of this and I want to go under surface and I want to go to modify stitch and stitch all of that together. OK. And then hit OK. Now this is a little bit on the tricky part because there's so many different ways you can do it, but let's do it. We are going to use this lo stitched lofted surface to trim a cube. 
So I, if I wanted my art piece to be 250 millimeters wide, the size of this, I could extrude these in individual shapes out under the solid tool. I could just select all these or I could just make and hit the extrude key and I could extrude this down, right? With extrude here like this. But another thing you can do, and this is a little trick, you can also scale this up when it's done. So let's say that I wanted to remove a section of this artwork from my block of wood. What I can do is create a box. I'm gonna choose this um, plane, my XY plane, and I'm gonna draw a box within the confines. And this time I'm gonna do 150 by 150, and that is gonna be my art form. I can always expand it the way I want. But what's really cool about the understanding this is that if you remove a section of this block, of this section of the art from the block, you can get really creative and rotate things. So I'm gonna to go to my 3D view here and I'm going to, I'm gonna to go to new body over here on the left and I want the artwork, keep in mind, to be split by this. So I gotta make sure that it's really big, uh, it's, it's thicker, then the actual profile depth is, and also it stays within the confines of this because I'm gonna use this lofted surface to split it. And then um, I'm gonna select okay on that. So now I have a new body. And now what I'm gonna do is move that body and I'm going to subtract the, a shape by using the split tool. Since this is a surface, I'm gonna go back under the surface menu and I am gonna to go to modify, I'm gonna split the body. Okay, the body to split, I wanna choose the cube I just created. Remember, I can expand that in the future. And then under the splitting tool, I'm gonna to select that and I'm gonna choose the lofted surface. And then if you need to extend it, you can, but I already kinda of did that. And then I'm gonna select okay. And so now it created two other shapes. I have the shape that I want, which is this shape, here, so I'm gonna hide the other shapes. Uh, I think it's this here, and I'm gonna move this shape up here to the top. And now I'm starting to get some of that artwork that I really like. I'm gonna turn off my other two sketches, and now I have some artwork, and I can go back and I can use that surface that I created as a splitting tool. And now I wanna soften these edges a little bit, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna select the top, maybe at the top spline or the vertex to where it meets. And I'm just going to select this and I'm gonna hit my F key, which does a fillet, and I'm gonna choose two millimeters. And that will soften it. So now just to end up where we were at the beginning, if I go under render and I bring this up and I choose my materials, I can drag a piece of wood over to it. Um, if I wanted to do uh, cherry, I would just download that and I would drag cherry on top of that and I can include the uh, brightness. I'm gonna turn off that construction plane right there and now I have my beautiful piece of artwork. It's obviously a simulation of what it would be, but it just shows you what you can do. So that's it guys. Whatever you do, make something that connects someone. Bye.